Welcome, my fantastic friends, to a lesson about factors. I know you've been working with them pretty hard, and you've probably been looking for a way to track all the things you've been noticing. Well, grab yourself a table C, and maybe even a table D, and let's organize. Wait, there's something else you're going to need as well. Uh, besides a pencil, go ahead and grab a colored pencil, red, orange, pink, something sort of intense. We're going to be keeping track of something else we might see as well. You will also need some objects and two containers because you're going to want to count some things out to isolate that number while you're working with it. We've got beads and, you know, if you did that factors lesson, you might have seen some other things you can use as well. Okay. We've got our objects, we have table C, and there's our pencils. So we're ready to go. You know, I'd love to start with one, but maybe you'd like to start with something a little bit higher. So why don't you go ahead and pick the number? 12? Well, all right, 12 is a good number to start with. So we're gonna go ahead and count out 12 objects into a container. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's pretty much exactly the same as you've done with all your other factors work. And now, just like with the other factors work, we're going to start creating twelve out of different groups, starting with the smallest and working our way up to the largest groups we can make. But we're going to keep a track of something else too. So watch this. The first thing I'm going to try, of course, is to build my 12 out of 1s. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It seems that I can definitely build 12 out of 1. But I also want to know how many groups of one did I make? Twelve. So let's say we've got one taken twelve times. One times twelve. Let's write that down. Going right over to the row of twelve and writing down one times twelve. It's pretty simple. The next group we try to make is groups of two. So let's do it. There's one group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two, five groups of two, six groups of two. So two works for sure. We would write that down, but we also want to know how many groups. Two taken how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six groups of two. That's two times six, and we're going to write that down putting a comma after 1 times 12 to separate them. Here's what we've got so far. 1 times 12, 2 times 6. I wonder what others we'll find. Hmm, okay. Well, we're going to try 3, so let's see. There's a group of 3. There's a group of 3. There's a group of three. Hey, and another group of three. And we've got four groups of three. That's three times four. We should write that down. So we're not just keeping track of the factors, but also how many times we take that factor. It's pretty cool. You ready to see something really cool? Well, we did groups of three. Of course, we're going to try groups of four. Let's see what that looks like. Well, it works. And how many groups? Three groups. Now, we had four groups of three, and now we have three groups of four. We've seen a little bit of an inverse here. Things have flipped. This is four times three. Let's go ahead and write it down. Right next to that three times four, it looks pretty reflective. Okay, you ready to move on? Let's try five. Hmm. No luck with that one. Moving on to 6. We're not even going to write down that 5 because it is not a factor of 12, but 6 does appear to be. And how many groups of 6 do you see? Two groups of 6. 
Hey, didn't we have six groups of two? What's going on here? Let's write down six times two as well. You probably remember this part from all of your fractions practice. You probably remember this next part from all of your factors practice. We're just going to keep trying until we run out of things to try. So let's try seven. Big no. Uh, how about eight? No. Uh, nine? Still nothing. Ten? Eesh. Eleven? Twelve. It's the last thing we can try because there's nothing else left. And how many groups of twelve do you see? Just one. This is an inverse of the first one that we had. One times twelve. Now we're going to be writing down twelve times one. That's our last fractors pair. So this is what we got for pairs of our factors. For 12, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 4 times 3, 6 times 2, 12 times 1. These are all the different ways we can make 12. That works pretty well. and You can explore all these numbers, but I want to explore another number with you to show you something you might have already found out in your factors explorations. We're going to try this next number here, 13. Oh, you know where I'm going with this, do you? Well, let's find out. Go ahead and make sure that you have 13 objects in your container. I have 12 there so far, so there's 13. 13, okay. So we're going to start with that smallest group again. We're going to start with one. Now, we may already know the rule that, well, one is a factor of all numbers, but we should still try it anyway this time. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13. This also helps me make sure I actually have the right amount. You don't want to have the wrong amount and get weird factors that don't make sense. But we know that we can do 1 times 13 because we can see the 13 ones right there. Let's go ahead and write this down. And we'll get prepared for our next one. Let's try 2. There's one group of 2 and uh, two groups of 2 three groups of two, four groups of two, five groups of two, six groups of two, and no. Oh. Yeah, that's not going to work out very well. We've got six groups of two, but then there's that one left over, so nothing to write down. We're going to move on to three. There's a group of three. There's a group of three. There's a group of three. Hmm. It happened again. That didn't work. All right, well, we'll try four. One of these will work. Oh. Hmm. That's not going to work either. All right. Well, there's bound to be a factor in here somewhere. Let's try groups of five. Oh. Okay. Well, there's always the group of six that we could try. Yo. That doesn't work. Group of seven? Eight? Nine? Running out of room here. 10, 11, 12. Well, gee, there's only one more we can try. Does it really help us? There's nothing really showing up here. Well, all right, I guess there's only two factors of 13. One and 13. Here we have 13 times one. Let's write this down and talk about what's happening here. Because this is a special type of factor that we found special type of number as well. There's only two factors for 13. 1 and 13. And we, we have a special name for numbers like this. If you find a number like this that can only be factored by itself in 1, you have a prime number. Ding, 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 ding. That's where we're going to take our intense colored pencil and circle or shade in the square for that number like so. 
And you'll probably find other prime numbers as well. There's quite a few of them. You might start to remember that you've already come across some of these, and maybe you can go ahead and write some of them down. And there could be really small prime numbers, and there can be really large prime numbers too. So I'm excited to see what you might find. Prime factors, huh? They're pretty prime. Well, anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I can't wait to see what you find. May your explorations be prime.